I'll use the deck of cards a little bit later, but right now, in fact, I might as well show you, all here, all different, well mixed. Like I say, we'll get to these in a minute. The very special cards, these, oh, very difficult to get. You've got to know somebody who works at the playing card factory, and then they sneak them out during the graveyard shift. What this is, this is blank playing card stock. This is the way it comes before they print the cards. They normally print the face on this side, and of course on the opposite side is where they would normally print the backs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to print these cards for you one at a time in slow motion by magic. Now, if you do any type of printing, of course, you need to have an original. And before you have an original, you can't make any copies without the original, right? So what I'm going to do is have somebody select an original card from the deck. You, sir, would you take this card, please? Anywhere you'd like, as I shuffle through the pack, just call out the word stop. Whenever you say stop, I'll stop. That's where you put that cut card, exactly at that position. And I'll even turn my head away. So you ready? Just call out stop anytime you'd like. Right there, perfectly good. The cut card goes in, and I do nothing. That just marks the position of where you said stop. Now these cards, I don't know if I mentioned it, but these have a very, very special secret chemical coating on the front side as well as the back side. And if you know the secret, you can use this special chemical coating to absorb ink from other cards in order to make duplicates or copies. Now you called out stop at this random location. That's where we put the cut card right here at the Ten of Spades. Now remember, of course, you could have said stop anywhere in the entire deck. You had 52 different cards from which to choose. Now watch closely. I'm going to do this very, very slowly. Your Ten of Spades will be the original. First, all I have to do is take the back design, touch it to one of the blank surfaces, and this upper card will absolutely, positively absorb the ink. And it dries instantly. It doesn't smudge or smear. Now it works just as easily on the face. This is a Ten of Spades, so I could transfer the Ten of Spades surface. The only problem is the face is not symmetric. So it kind of comes out as a mirror image. That's not really a problem because now we could use this mirror image of the Ten of Spades as the new original, and if we make a copy of that, we would get a mirror image of a mirror image, and it would end up looking exactly like the original Ten of Spades. Now here's something I discovered by accident. You could actually put a back on one surface like this, and then on the same surface, put the face like this. If you do this, you'll end up, of course, with two surfaces on one. Now, you don't have to print the entire surface either. You could just print a small portion. Say, for example, this much. All you do is you put it on like this, give a little squeeze, and that's all there is to it. Now, here's a little tip. If you do this at home, and I highly recommend that you do, make sure you allow the ink to dry for at least a full second before you touch it. If you transfer the ink and then touch it immediately before it dries, you could run into problems <laughs> like that. But once the cards dry, it takes about a second or two, then it's dried for life and it'll never smudge or smear again. Now keeping this principle in mind, here's something that's kind of fun. You could actually transfer the ink while it's drying, give it a little spin. That creates a very lovely effect like that. My personal favorite thing to do is to transfer the ink and while the ink is drying, rather than spin it, I like to snap all the printing down to one side. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, presto printo.